Last Expedition has recently transitioned to a free to play model, no longer requiring the Hunter Access token to be able to play the game. Here is everything you need to know about Last Expedition to ensure your survival, to make sure you do not get destroyed or devoured as soon as you land on the desolate planet of Aura. My name is Smiley Monster and I make Web3 gaming content mainly focusing on the Gala Games ecosystem. And this is the Last Expedition Beginner's Guide, so let's get to it. Okay, I'll be dividing this video into three parts. The first part will cover how to find and install the game. The second part will provide a brief tutorial on everything you need to know about the game. And the third part will be a demonstration of me navigating through a server, giving you a first hand look at gameplay and what you need to keep track of when playing Last Expedition. Firstly, where you can find Last Expedition, there are two places. The first is games.gala.com. Head over to the games tab, scroll down to Last Expedition and click play. This will launch another tab leading you to lastexpedition.game. The second option is to go directly to the website lastexpedition.game and click the download game. Keep in mind that this game is currently in pre-alpha, so don't expect something spectacular. Nevertheless, this is a good game for a pre-alpha. Once you've downloaded the game and installed the game in your desired location, I have mine in my gaming SSD dedicated exclusively to games. When you launch the game for the first time, if you have a Gala Games account, click the link Gala Games account option from the menu. If you have any NFTs or skins, make sure to link your account to access those in game. For those of you unfamiliar with Lost Expedition, it's a PvP VE extraction FPS shooter. Players explore a hazardous alien planet featuring technology from a forgotten race known as the Natari. On this planet named Aura, an abundance of Natari alien artifacts can be found. As hunters, your mission is to extract the artifact and safely leave the planet with the gathered resources. However, the task is far from straightforward as upon landing, you encounter an overwhelming number of monster creatures determined to tear you apart. Currently, there are four playable characters in Last Expedition, Alice, Jasper, Sebastian and Levi. Each character possesses a unique skill tailored to them. Alice wields a shoulder rocket for moderate area effect damage and destruction. Jasper deploys a shield wall, an energy barrier that not only blocks incoming enemy fire, but also damages foes upon contact. Sebastian offers a healing cloud providing a burst of area effect healing for himself and nearby teammates, potentially turning the tide in dogfights, and Levi utilizes a hoverboard for swift flanking, strategic movement, or expedited core transportation to the extract point. The hoverboard creates a cushion of electromagnetic energy between the board and the ground, allowing the player to jump and guide through the air when timed correctly. To activate an ability, press Q once the ability icon is fully charged. Each ability takes 60 seconds to recharge after use. Displayed in the bottom left of the UI alongside the health and armor bars. Each character has a distinct health and armor configuration visible in the bottom left of the UI. The health bar is the bottom one, while the armor one is the one above that. Jasper has the highest armor in the game, while Alice has the least in terms of weaponry. Alice and Levi have sniper rifles, whereas Jasper has access to grenade launchers, rocket launchers, light machine guns, shotguns. Sebastian is unique, equipped with a healing gun to support teammates, and some characters have access to bait balls and zipline launchers. Explore your character's arsenal and inventory by clicking on the character tab in the top of the menu and then pressing tab over the selected character to access their arsenal. Currently, the meta in Last Expedition centers around Jasper and Sebastian. The reason for this is bait balls. However, the development team have hinted an update to adjust bait balls, which should be released soon. While I've mentioned the several weapon types, crafting a weapon is an in-game activity. As soon as you drop onto the ship, Press the tab to bring up the inventory, choose which weapon to craft using the minerals provided at the start of the game. Personally, I prefer the hand cannon for its stopping power and reload speed. Some players prefer to craft an assault rifle due to the mineral to ammo ratio. Your choice depends on your playstyle and whether you're playing as part of a team or playing solo. If you do not like the crafted weapon, hover over it and hold down right click. And after a brief timer, you can recycle the weapon to retrieve some minerals. Note that you can only have one weapon in the slot, so choosing one either between several is crucial. To craft ammo, press the tab or the I to access the inventory menu, then select the same gun you are using. Crafting ammo costs a fraction for the entire gun. For instance, crafting a stack of 24 ammo for the hand cannon costs 200 minerals, when crafting the hand cannon itself requires 800 minerals. Some items like the bait balls and zip lines are one-time use items. On entering the game, you have a mining laser as your fifth weapon on the hotbar. While it deals minimal damage, one point to enemies, it is essential for obtaining minerals to craft weapons. 
A reddish glow resource node signifies minerals, while a purplish one indicates nyx used for crafting armor packs or better weapons for certain characters like Alice, Levi and Jasper. To mine resources, press 5 to equip the mining laser, approach the resource and hold left clicked. After a few seconds, the mineral will automatically be added to your inventory and Nyx will drop on the ground requiring you to press E to pick it up. The final in-game resource is Gaia. Acquired by killing enemies, they drop a greenish orb used to craft healing packs, bait balls and the healing gun. The mining laser has another function when equipped, pressing and holding the right mouse button initiates a scan known as bubbling. During this action, you must stand still for a few seconds as the radar charges. Additionally, entering an allies bubble and right clicking yourself increases the radar's range. Two people can extend one bubble, crucial for spotting enemies in servers with multiple teams. The key is displayed in the center during bubbling, serving as a reference if you ever get lost. Here's a quick rundown of what each color means on the radar. Cores are dark blue, fragments are turquoise, map regions are brown, hostile players are red, hostile creatures are yellow, minerals are orange, Nyx is purple and Gaia is green. To highlight something to a teammate, look at the point of interest and then press the middle mouse button. Now let's dive into what you will counter on Aura. There are several minor enemies, but the main four to pay attention to are the Porcupine, the Ravager, the Parasite or the Facehugger, and the Bone Snapper. The Porcupine is a ranged enemy that immobilizes players with acid missiles. The Ravager swallows the players whole, allowing them to shoot from within to deal damage to escape. The Parasite is a fast creature that jumps onto the player's faces, stunning them until removed. And the Bone Snapper is an armored tank that charges and deals sustainable damage, sometimes launching players off the map. Each enemy admits a distinct sound, emphasizing the importance of playing Last Explosion with sound on. Finally, the Hunter's primary objective as the game starts is to collect three fragments. These three fragments, indicated by the light greenish turquoise color, are scattered randomly throughout the map on each game. Once near a fragment, hold down the E key to initiate the extraction process. Defend the fragment as the extraction creates noise, attracting nearby monsters. Extracting a fragment has a chance to drop one to six nicks, which can be used to craft armor or better weapons for survival. After securing all three fragments, bubbling will reveal the location of a core, indicated by the dark bluish color on the radar. The core icon can change size, helping you identify the core. As you approach the core's location, several resources will be dropped to the ground and a swarm of monsters, including all the Naemons, will be triggered. Requiring you to defend the core, a message is broadcasted to all teams on the server, signaling the discovery of the core and its location, making this the time of PvP action if it hasn't already begun. Once you've eliminated all monsters defending the core, you are ready to extract. Press E on the core to hold it. The player holding the core cannot use their weapons unless they drop it. Easily done by shooting your weapon. Pick up the dropped core by pressing E while holding the core. Character's abilities can be used. A vulnerable advantage for characters such as Levi with the hoverboard. The core will display a new icon on the map indicating the extract point. All remaining teams on the server can see this point, potentially leading to camping or ambushing situations. Exercise extreme caution when bringing the core to the extract point. Upon reaching the extract point, insert the core into the spaceship, initiating a countdown timer. Defend the core and your ship from monsters and any surviving players. This phase is the most chaotic involving swarms of named monsters and players attempting strategic moves such as sniping or drive-bys. If a team manages to steal the core, they need to heal the core at their extract point. Once the countdown timer concludes and you are on the ship, you achieve victory. There are two types of victory, victory extracted and victory left behind. Both currently offer the same rewards, but in the future, victory extracted will yield full rewards, while victory left behind will provide partial rewards. The difference between the two lies on being on the ship during the game completion, which is victory extracted, or not on the ship, victory left behind. For example, if you got eaten by a Ravager and it takes you off the ship, but your team still wins, you would experience a victory left behind. And if you are on the ship, you will experience a victory extracted. Now, this is everything you need to know. Here is all the knowledge in action onto part three of the gameplay video. Okay, so here we are in the game. And the first thing you wanna do is head over to the characters tab. So you can select which character you want to play with. Now, Alice has the shoulder rockets as a unique skill. Jasper has the shield orb. Sebastian has the healing cloud. And Levi has the hoverboard, as I explained previously. 
And if you want to find out what equipment the characters have, you want to press tab and it will bring up the default loadout here. So as you can see here in the one key, the two key, the three key and the four key, this is what you can craft in each key. So if you craft the Jackal hand cannon, you won't be able to craft the Stalker assault rifle or the Stalker assault rifle plus silencer, I believe. Everything in this column is basically what you can craft one of in the slot. So you can either craft the shotgun or the submachine gun, and that will be your slot two. And then as in slot three, you can craft whichever sniper rifle you want, and that will be the one in slot three. Now, slot four is basically your utility slot. So you can either craft a graft pack, which is the healing pack. You can craft a protex pack, which is the armor pack, or you can craft a zipline launcher, which allows you mobility. Now, some characters don't have access to certain things. For example, you have the sniper rifle and the zipline here, but the character we're going to be playing with, Sebastian, if we press tab, you can see he does not have access to the zipline and he does not have access to sniper rifles. What he does have access to is something called the healing gun, which allows you to heal your teammates and the bait ball if you are playing solo right now you have to use the bait ball because it is such a good tool and a utility tool it does need some adjustments just some minor adjustments don't nerf it per se because it is a wonderful item to use in game but we will be playing as sebastian and as you can see here the skins are available if we go over to alice alice has the bunch of skins because she is the poster child of last expedition but let's select sebastian and then press play and then click on this button right here which is the play button. Now you can press tab or select regions and you can select which region you want to play in, or you can select um, this thing right here, which select good servers only. If you uncheck that, it'll give you a list of all the servers, but some of them might not have good connections. Now let's quickly go over what a server is. A server is basically the map that you're going to be playing on. So as you can see here, this is the name of the server, the amount of people currently playing that can play, uh, the threat level and the mods and to join you just have to press this button here but let me quickly go over threat level and mods so threat level determines the difficulty of that server the higher the threat level the more harder it is for you to complete that map as a solo or even as a group mods basically mean how many nfts the server owner has put on there so as you can see here there's nine mods on this one 12 mods on this one and one mod on this one pizza or burgers pizza as always but threat level 15 mod one is the lowest level difficulty and if you are new to the game this is the one that you should be selecting to play on so let me just quickly scroll down to find, there you go, there it is. Get Wrecked is the maximum threat level with the maximum amount of mods. You can currently have 49 mods and a max threat level of 3,920. This is one of the hardest servers to play. And if you want to see me solo this server or a server similar to this server, I believe it was called Ravage Me Hard is what I did because somebody was already playing on Get Wrecked. But you can check that out over on X or Twitter because last week on the head of the game, Bitbender challenged anybody to solo a max threat level server and post it on YouTube. And the first person who did that would get a little something special. So I am waiting to see what he has in store for that. But let's quickly go back up to pizza and burgers and press join. And then anytime you join, it gives you a little tool tip when the game is loading or when it is changing sections which is good to know, but I'll be explaining all of that. So you guys don't really have to read the tooltips. So once you select a server, this is the waiting lobby. Now, if you look in the middle, this is the interactive map. This basically shows you what the map you're going to drop into will look like. And if you hover over these locations, you can press E and you will drop to that location. Now, if you press tab, it brings up the menu, which basically gives you what information and what you need to do. You need to collect three fragments, grab the core, and extract off the planet this is simplified and then you can select which team you want to join here so i'm going to select burners and if i select here i can now select my drop location of here the three good locations to drop from my testing is impact site wildland woods uh wild woods and the nomad camp because the reason this is fairly close to the center and you have options to have a lot of fragments and a lot of minerals around you now to start the game, you're just going to press this big red button here and it will start a countdown and you can pause it by pressing E. And one other thing, if you're playing with a lot of other teammates, be careful on the last one, two seconds of the map because some people will select R665, but then say somebody has selected L430, they will click on that and then two teams can drop on the same location. This is called hot dropping. So as soon as that happens, they will basically drop on the same map and same area as you, and they will be in the same ship as you. So as soon as that happens, there's going to be knife fights. They're going to be gunfight right off the bat. 
and it's going to be insane pvp now once the countdown timer is complete you will see your team here and it will load into the map as soon as the screen goes black you want to press tab because that will bring up the crafting menu and you want to select the gun that you want to craft. Now I'm going to craft the hand cannon and as you can see here it is crafting and then now we have the mineral laser open. You just want to hold right click. The reason you want to do this is because it will give you an idea where you want to go. So as you can see here the turquoise bluey green thing here is a fragment. The key is in the middle right there. You can see what everything is but the first thing I like to do is find a yellow orangey item right here and that is known as minerals and minerals are what you need to craft ammo weapons and other things in game it's when you press tab that is what you need so we're going to find this thing right here and then press left click with the laser and we have a bunch of minerals here and we're just going to craft more handgun ammo now you can see right there as soon as we dropped a lot of mobs have spawned so it can get chaotic you ideally do not want to stand still okay we have a gaia piece right there we're just going to quickly grab that up craft the bait ball and now we are good to go we have a bait ball so we have an emergency oh shit button and we'll be good to go now if you have a lot of minerals and if you have a lot of items that you want to share with your teammate just press tab and if you click up here you can drop it by left clicking and it should drop the minerals right here let me quickly go find more minerals or another Gaia or Protex pack and I can show you just that so if we go there and if you are downhill it, you can press shift which is to run and then you can press control which is to slide now if you tab that that is a porcupine and you want to make sure you kill all the porcupines because these are the annoying snipers of the game and they can destroy your team from a distance there we go so we've gotten rid of that now if you press five and then right click again it will get the bubble up which scans and you can right click to pinpoint certain things for your teammates so i've pinpointed a gaia location there and there is a mineral deposit right there so i'm going to pick both of these up and as i said you can press tab left click and it will drop the resources for your teammates and i'm going to pick those up because i need them because i don't have any teammates currently playing with me now we press right tab again and now we want to look for a fragment oh if you see here purple means nyx which is basically armor and since we need that right now we want to go grab that so it looks like this you want to do the same thing get the mining laser out press left click and then it should drop the nyx and then be careful of your surroundings you want to make sure i pick all of these up then i want to sprint craft the bait ball and then craft the protex packs you never want to stand still in this game because if you stand still you're likely to die or get um, harassed by a bunch of aliens now i'm going to quickly turn off the webcam to show you how armor works so bang turn this off and as you can see in the bottom left i have two bars the bottom bar is the health bar and the top bar is the armor so in the fourth slot i've crafted the protex pack so i just press four and then hold down left click and i will apply the armor to my character and as you can see i've just got a purple tab right there i'm gonna load it all up and then continue killing these mobs and let me just quickly turn on the webcam again oh my god there we go and that is why you don't stand still because it gives the mobs the chance to just get on your ass make sure you're always reloading make sure the weapons are ready and fully loaded with ammo and now we're just going to oh there's a gaia piece right there so we're going to collect that but let's go look for a fragment there's mineral right there gaia right there and then where is the fragments so okay well since there's mineral right there let's go that way grab this off the bait ball go down here grab this now when you scan you ideally want to do it out in the open because sometimes this terrain can block what is available to scan and what is available to pick up on your radar so there's more minerals over there there's a random location right there then we cannot find any fragments so i'm gonna go to a top of a hill and then see if i can get a better understanding of what is available on the fragments but i have enough minerals to craft a shotgun so we're just going to craft that as well because having two weapons an emergency oh shit button to swap is always good and then we have minerals there minerals there and then a fragment there so we're going to go in that direction now if you look on top of the map there's cohort so you can say your teammates head to 266 or head straight west 
and that will give them the information they need to catch up to you. You can also use the mining laser as a weapon. It deals one damage, but it doesn't, it's not the ideal thing to do. If you don't have any ammo or minerals to craft, you can do it like that. You can also press F on the keyboard to do a melee attack and that will hit any enemy near you. Now we're also going to pick this up because it's more nicks and you can never have enough nicks and we're getting hit from the back. So do that, craft three more, pick this up and then head west to pick up the fragment. Now I'm going to speed this up till we get to the fragment. So you guys know where to do once we get to a fragment. There's another mineral right there. We're going to ping right there. Now, you, if you are further away, your miner, mining laser is going to deal less damage to the mineral deposit. And the closer you are, the more damage you're going to deal. So ideally, you want to be right next to it. You don't want to be using your mining laser a further away because it's going to slow you down and it's going to take a lot more time. Now, this is what a core. No, this is what a fragment. Sorry, not a core. This is what a fragment looks like. You want to head straight over to it. And then you want to hold down E to begin extracting. You want to make sure you hold E down for the circle to complete. And now it is started. This will basically create a bunch of noise, which allows mobs to hear you in certain vicinity. And they will start coming towards your location. But since it looks like nothing's there, I'm just going to kind of quickly grab this and then make sure I craft another set of ammo just in case. Now we have our first mob right there. And as you can see, they are slowly starting to wander in. We want to make sure we grab all the Gaia we can. Now, certain enemies have armor, which means you need to hit them twice. So as you can see here, that is armored. That one is not. These are bone snappers. So we're going to throw a bait ball. Make sure we craft one more. Reload the hand cannon. Switch to the shotgun. And then go ham to make sure everything dies. And there we go. We make sure to reload the shotgun as well because the shotgun takes a longer time to reload. So you always want to make sure you have that ready to go. And once the fragment is complete, you just want to hold E down and it will give you anywhere between one to six nicks. We have one nicks there, which is not good. As soon as that's complete, you want to bubble and find your next destination. So there is a fragment over there and that is the closest one. So we are going to go over to that. We also seen a mineral somewhere along here which is right there. So we have roughly 2000 minerals and as a healer, you don't really need a lot to craft your weapon. So this will do us for the rest of this run. There's also purple stuff right there, which is a good reminder. We need to apply armor to ourselves to make sure if a ravager does find us, we don't get swallowed and destroyed really, really quickly. Now I'm going to go over to here. Pick this up because we need nicks and the fragment is right next to it right there. So we pick up the three nicks and then craft. And then since we use the resources, we can pick those up again. Then we begin the extraction of this fragment and ideally have the hand cannon ready to go. But if there's a lot more mobs, you can switch to the bait ball and throw the bait ball. I'm just going to. There we go. There is a bone snapper right there. So I'm going to shoot and get rid of him and then throw the bait ball right there. I threw two by accident. And as you can see here, it gets the mobs off you and then onto that bait ball. And it is a good old shit, basically button to throw. And I'm just going to destroy the remaining enemies. It looks like the bullet physics could use a bit of work because sometimes when you're shooting, it doesn't go through. Also, if you shoot in the vicinity of a fragment, it doesn't work. Like it will bounce off the shield you saw a couple of seconds ago and it wouldn't hit the mob behind it. So we're going to harvest this. going to pick up the nicks. We're going to craft. We're full. So let me quickly apply two armor packs. And then you want to craft more armor. And then switch to the mining laser and get the bubble up and running. And then we have another one over there. We also have a Gaia up there. So we're going to tag the fragment and then we're going to quickly grab the Gaia on the way. Make sure we have the mining laser. I mean, make sure we have the bait balls ready to go. 
We also have more minerals here. And the reason I'm grabbing quite a lot of minerals is currently uh, when you're watching this video, they have a thing event going where anything you take off the planet. So if you get a victory screen and you leave and you manage to extract anything you take off that planet will be counted towards the distribution and it will be given to you in your inventory. So I'm going to grab as much minerals, as much fragments and as many cores as I possibly. Oh, shit. That is a porcupine. I need to make sure I kind of focus right here. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to shoot. Oh my God. I'm going to have to throw another bait ball. I'm going to reload right here. There's a porcupine. Reload. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of the porcupine first. There we go. And then throw the bait ball. I'm going to craft more bait balls. Pick up that Gaia. Switch to shotgun. Get rid of all the enemies close by. And then reload. That could have ended badly. That could have definitely ended badly. And that is a bone snapper. Make sure to get rid of the bone snapper. Oh no, porcupine getting snipered. Fable, throw, craft another one, heal myself, reload, craft more ammo, get rid of the bone snappers, get rid of all of this. So when this happens, don't worry about minerals, don't worry about anything else. Just try to survive. And as you can see here, the porcupine is destroying me. You don't want to be next to that because if you are next to that, it explodes and it will destroy you. And I'm going to circle around. All right, cool. So now that everything's taken care of, we also need to make sure we craft two more ammo. Grab, grab the fragment. Grab the Nyx. Craft more healing. And then select the bubble. Find out where the core is. Now the core is... Oh my god, how many porcupines are there? All right, well, that is the core. The strangely glowing purpley blue thing. So we're just going to head in that direction. And we're going to reload the uh, hand cannon. And we're just going to ignore that porcupine. We don't have time to deal with you. We spend quite a bit dealing with the other ones. But if you do ignore the enemies, it's going to cause you issues. So make sure when you get to the core, you throw a bait ball. Because that is when it's going to spawn a bunch of enemies. Now, if you look here, this is a small mineral deposit. But if we look at that one over there... That is a bigger mineral deposit. And I'm just going to quickly throw the bait ball here so I can show you. And the minerals we've got from the previous one, this one should give us like a thousand. So it gave us 1,100, which is a lot. And ideally you want to try and get the bigger mineral deposits. But if you can't, just getting a smaller one at the start is good enough. Uh, I'm going to scan here. All right, well, I'm going to throw the bait ball, craft two more, and then scan. You see that thing right there? That is a face hugger. And that is what I mean by not killing the porcupine. It can get you killed in like this moment right here. So I'm going to throw this. Switch to shotgun. But shotgun's reloading. There's a face hugger right there. So I want to make sure I kill that thing before it gets jumps on my face. Going to throw this. Going to craft this. Going to reload this. There's a porcupine, got rid of that. Whew. All right, any Gaia fragments, any Gaia fragments, no Gaia fragments, but we have two bait balls. Uh, that should be enough. Now let's go scan for, so you don't need to get any more fragments. You just need to find the core, which should be, where is the core? I don't know, I've lost, there it is right there. So you want to aim for the blue, section and it can be fuzzy as you saw it grows in size 
but this is the one you need to go to after you get three fragments. So now that we're on a hill, I'm just going to shift and then slide, which gives me increased movement speed. And it allows me to travel to my locations faster. Also, you have to pay attention to sound in this game. Sound is a big thing. It basically tells you when enemies are next to you, when enemies have died, when PvP has occurred, when the ships have left, everything, etc. Uh, now let's right click and find the core, which is right there. So we want to head to 97 and just continue going straight. It's normally east. Now, judging by the location, it might be underground. I'm going to slide, slide again. You can see the movement speed difference when you're sliding and when, when you're running. You can jump over certain terrain right here. Here and then core should be somewhere around here. Slide down. Revealed. Now, as soon as this is revealed, I like to throw a bait ball and then craft a bait ball. The main reason for that is, oh my god, there's so much stuff around here. I'm going to throw another one. This. You want to make sure you have the bait ball ready for the Ravenger, because if you don't, you're going to be in a world of pain. Oh my god, no, I'm porcupine. When the court is revealed, it drops a bunch of resources. For example, it drops uh, Gaia, Nyx, and minerals. So you want to use the bait balls to distract the enemies, pick up all the minerals and stuff that you need, throw the bait balls again, then deal with the enemies. Oh my god, so much damage done to me. I'm out of ammo, so I need to craft ammo for the hand cannon, throw another bait ball, craft more bait balls. And this is where it gets a little tricky to manage. And... Reload. There you go. I've got a bunch of Gaia there. Gonna throw the bait balls. Now I need to heal myself, but if I can just keep the enemies busy with the bait balls, I won't have to deal with a lot of damage. So I just need to be careful of that, that porcupine right there. And then since I have my healing character, I can just wait for the skills to come up and then heal myself. Press Q when it's available. Managed to get one hit off. Now, I ideally want to kill this porcupine before I grab the core. But if it's not going to work out, I'm going to grab that, grab the Gaia, hold E to extract the core. And as soon as you extract the core, an icon will appear for the spaceship and you need to gun it for the spaceship. Uh, if you have teammates, they can defend you. And once the core is revealed, enemy teams can know the location of the core. I'm going to drop it and then kill this. So you can drop it by just left clicking and it will drop the core. But if you do drop the core, it will become the location will come available on the map. Now I'm going to head over to the spaceship icon. I'm going to ignore everything else. I'm going to slide. Oh, no, you need to be careful when sliding because you don't want to slide off the map, especially with this overlay. You can sometimes lose track of your terrain and I've actually slid off the map before which causes me to lose quite a lot of progress and now we're on the ship you just need to place the core here by pressing E and evac has started now if you have enough Gaia and I have you have enough bait balls basically bait balls last for 10 seconds so you can just spam bait balls and not worry about anything make sure you craft another one and you can just stand here and kill the Ravagers, kill the ancient enemies, and survive the extract. That is why I say the bait balls need to be adjusted or need to be balanced. Because right now, as you can see, there is no problem. Once one is done, I throw another one. Don't need to craft this. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to recycle my second slot because it gives me a bunch of minerals. And currently, if I extract with more minerals, I'm going to get that in the distribution. And there we have it, victory extracted. You can also get victory left behind when your teammates extract, but you are left behind on the planet. Uh, right now, there is no difference, but in the future, when you are victory extracted and victory left behind, if you're left behind, you'd get a portion of the resources you would actually get if you extracted normally. As you can see here, there's one person that's extracted on the ship. 
and that is mission complete so that is the demo of a match what you have to do i managed to get three fragments secured the core and it was roughly 22 minutes long and there you go